Dark internet topologies might sound like a sketchy term, like you would go sort of to a dark alley to like do something really mischievous, like get drugs or like uh, smack someone's face or like do something nasty, like uh, as similarly to uh, a hacker term that got a really strange kind of uh, uh, sub sort of tone, right? In the last several decades where, in, in fact, it only means like a researcher, someone who really uh, proactively interacts with their computer, trying to extract as uh, much as possible. Dark internet in this context refers to internet invisible to surveillance. It's a shadow, but not in a shadow as we used to the term in, 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 in our IRL but rather as a shadow cast onto a private life of one online. So in that respect, uh, dark internet technologies, in fact, are pro-human, uh, pro-one's uh, privacy, pro-personal uh, uh, space uh, in this vast, uh, very observed, very monitored, very unregulated in one way and overly regulated in another way, <laughs> a space of the internet. But I think we need to begin with the question of what is a topology? What is a network topology in that respect? What a word topology means? Coming from the Greek, Greek origins, it means the way one can traverse a territory, right? It's, it's a map. It's like it's a guidance for traversal. It's a, it's a walking instruction. The term network Topology means the way the network is laid out, the way the network is constructed. In this case, it can be a line with uh, different nodes attached to it. It can be kind of a tree-like structure, like it is here. You can see that uh, like on the left here, there's this kind of almost sort of like a devilish kind of star topology structure. And uh, there's a very classic that has this internet cloud uh, above uh, a star topology. And topology in networking <coughs> refers to how computers are interconnected, how they are interlinked, what is the way of connecting uh, those nodes uh, of the network together. If they're each connected via each other, or if they're all connected with one another, if they are somehow connected, as in like mesh networking, I suppose, uh, where connection is not even guaranteed uh, at any time. Interestingly, uh, the network that we all use, the internet, comprised of pretty much all of these uh, different topologies. It incorporates, at different levels, uh, in different uh, capacities, it incorporates all of these different topologies for different causes, right? And let's say when you connect to your home Wi-Fi and your home uh, Wi-Fi uh, access point is connected to a router, which is most probably the same device, and that device is connected to, to your internet service provider and that internet service provider shares uh, a fiberglass uh, uh, with other uh, internet service providers that comes to an internet exchange and then goes undersea, it is very likely to be based on this star topology, which is actually the most common one. It is very difficult to get, uh, to put your finger really onto how the internet looks like. And this is by far the most abstract <laughs> illustration of what the internet <laughs> might look like, because it's kind of, for being the biggest machine uh, humans ever built, by the way, internet is uh, hard to observe as a whole. There is, it's, it's, it's like you would need to sort of manage to extract yourself rather far out into the orbit to be able to observe uh, uh, the entire uh, globe of our planet, I guess, to sort of visualize yourself, uh, the internet. And for that reason, uh, people are often coming up with like the most ridiculous ways of uh, visualizing what the internet looks like. This is a little bit more like down to the ground kind of uh, visualization. You know, it's actually very difficult to find a good picture for this, for the internet in general. It's like very frustrating. But in this regard in particular, when you try to talk about it, it's like it's, uh, it's sort of like an elephant in a room, you know. Uh, 
it's like we don't notice it, but it's like sort of also hard to uh, even bring up. Like, what is it exactly? So it might be that. This is closer. That is, in fact, the work of graphic designers at the New York Times magazine. In the last month, they came up with this, which is like heavily based, if not like directly copied from uh, the submarine internet map. Basically, uh, introducing us to the idea how the internet is actually laid out, meaning that it's not actually going through the air. It's going in the middle of the sea, not even at the bottom of the sea. Most of these cables are suspended uh, 100 meters under the water, under the surface of the ocean, uh, where they cannot be cut by you know, boats, yet are regularly damaged uh, by different uh, uh, causes. And that's why there are many backup cables. And uh, all of the bandwidth that we have is practically coming from the sea. And, uh, and because uh, of being such an industry, all of these cables are, of course, owned not by the people. You know, we wish the internet was by the people, for the people, but unfortunately, it's owned by uh, governments, state companies, and corporations. Here on the right, you can see these really ambiguous names that actually mean nothing to us, but it is, in most cases, subsidiary companies set up either by the governments or uh, large internet traffic consumers, such as Amazon, for instance, or Facebook, Telefonica, which owns actually quite a few of these names, especially in the context of Spanish-speaking and Hispanic South American, Latin American context. They own a lot. Uh, here I just framed the European and the uh, American sort of intersection for you to see what paths uh, our traffic actually takes when we try to access your Facebook account, right? And of course, there is data farm uh, in Ireland these days, and the traversal of data is very ambiguous like that. It is very, uh, first of all, unpredictable. There is a thing known such as peering. Uh, you, your, your data is probably uh, not taking the same route every time you uh, try to access uh, a website for several reasons. Uh, there are also commercial reasons, there are political reasons, how uh, internet networks, networks appeared. And, and peering means having to, because per definition, uh, internet uh, engineering uh, task force uh, has outlined many years ago that internet address is not a property and you cannot, while you can lease it and you will be asked to pay for it, you will never own it. And so it applies to sub-networks and larger, what's called network spaces uh, on the internet. You cannot own the internet for it being supposedly public domain, but it's more and more it becomes uh, uh, questionable, especially with the roll rollout of uh, technologies such as 5G, which will bring a much more proprietary uh, uh, backbone technologies uh, onto the market. We don't own the internet. We rely very heavily on governments and corporations with their political and business agendas on how our inter internet data is distributed along the, around the world. There are a few tools that one can use, whether it's in Linux or in OS X, to actually see what route your data takes along the way. I actually wanted to show you like some live examples, and this particular tool is called Traceroute. It exists in every operating system. Even if you are on Windows, uh, you shouldn't be discouraged uh, trying it out. It will tell you a lot about uh, how the internet works. And uh, at first, of course, it's, uh, it looks very obscure, and it is kind of obscure because as many internet-related tools, it was probably developed like 30 years ago, and uh, while updated, the output, the looks of it <laughs> haven't really changed. So let's say I am in, well, currently in Slovenia, and I'm trying to find out what is the way my internet connection takes in order to uh, talk to a server that, in this case, uh, is host, uh, hosting sta.si, your local uh, uh, news agency, I suppose, right? Uh, and even in this example, although I am in Slovenia, we are in Ljubljana right now, and I'm trying to talk to sta.si, my connection still takes what is known as nine hops, 
nine jumps that it makes from one router to another. If we imagine that uh, our internet connection is, is, is composition of, uh, of, of, of these subnetworks, and my data is trying to reach another network, so it would hop from one network to another to get to uh, where it had to go. And those, those hops are, those, are these records that you see in the output. Like, can you give me like an example of, uh, of a uh, popular online resource around Slovenia? Other than, uh, all right, uh, so Delo SI. What I'm trying to get at here is that despite the fact that we are in Slovenia, our traffic might be going out of the country and then come back in, in a very strange, obscure ways. Here we also see an effect of, um, well, it's not necessarily like intentionally obfuscated, but these dots mean that the routers along the way, uh, they do not respond to a very particular uh, a protocol that is uh, made for analyzing and maintaining uh, the internet. It, mean, it means that one of the routers along the way or one of the providers along the way decided like, okay, we are not going to participate in this uh, uh, survey uh, or in this sort of uh, observation, which is kind of, I think, very unfriendly uh, again, uh, because I think it's our right to, to, to see how the data goes around. Let's try uh, another site, maybe there, uh, providers uh, are a little more kind. Yeah, this is, it was better, <laughs> now it's again. Uh, yeah. yeah, but in, indeed, you see, why is it going via Zagreb? <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be a local resource. You know, and uh, this type of questions, uh, well, this is Ljubljana still. This is Ljubljana. This, this is Vienna. Why is it going to Austria? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I guess the matter, the idea is that, uh, so there is another tool uh, that I can very quickly show you. Uh, we can say, what's the IP address of this provider? That's the IP address of the server. And what can we deduct from that? We can use a tool called uh, GIP, G, G or IP lookup, which I think by the name you can already tell what it does, right? It, it connects uh, geo, geography to IP address. So it can tell us where this IP address is mapped to because uh, as an organization, organization that is assigned a subnetwork of addresses, you usually kind of register that with ICANN, which is the US-based organization uh, for uh, distribution of IP addresses. And it's kind of lazily updated, so it's not always really up to date, but Google actually has <laughs> amazingly, well, not surprisingly, in fact, Google, Google has much better uh, information about this uh, without using ICANN information because they have their own means, clearly. You can look it up and actually see where it is. And yeah, so if for some reason it's actually hosted in Croatia, not even here. That's just a small example, like how internet uh, topology can be explored and how in this case, I suppose Slovenia and Croatia are actually in, like, in a good relationship, right? But if you are a dissident in a uh, country which is not very welcomed by you know, the regime of whatever, the States or the UK or Germany or whatever, and you are trying to look up something and you end up uh, doing it on the, on the server and on the network that is uh, situated in one of the countries that are unfriendly to your actions or who are like actively looking uh, to uh, like extradite you somewhere, this is clearly going to be a very big problem. So this, that's kind of uh, the dissolution of uh, borders and whether, of course, we would prefer, I personally would prefer borders not to exist and I think they shouldn't. Uh, they still exist on the internet despite it being uh, 
supposedly interplanetary network, uh, one day, or at least the network of networks today, it's still bordered up like that. And that's, that's all I'm currently trying to communicate, that there is uh, a very particular political agenda to how uh, the internet is distributed. It's going to be this, <laughs> which is known as a 5i program. And of course, there is 7i program, and there is 9i program, and there is a 14i program these days. And in fact, it is an effort uh, led by the CIA originally and NSA later which these guys are part of, in fact, very recently. So you, you can clearly see it's the UK, it's Australia, it's the US, New Zealand, interestingly, and what is that? Canada. Canada. Right, <laughs> Canada. <laughs> so these are the countries that you definitely don't want your network, uh, internet traffic be going through if there is anything sensitive, politically sensitive, or something that the Western world will not like seeing. And this brings me closer to the actual, the subject of this talk, the uh, uh, vending private network machine that Julian and I put together. After having to use internet for years and having to use VPN, we were like, it's actually very easy to evade this. And why aren't like, why isn't everyone doing that? And in fact, many people are doing it. And uh, creating Vending private network uh, box was a commentary on how ridiculous something like this is. How easily this, this, and these can be avoided uh, just by having to use uh, an overlay, uh, what what is known as virtual private network overlay that sits on top of the internet and provides you with uh, an encrypted uh, passage through uh, hostile networks. And to say a little more about the partnership between the countries, so these uh, orange lines, I think they refer to the countries involved in 5i partnership. Darker lines, they refer to countries of NATO and countries cooperating on the 7i's or 14i's <laughs> initiative, which basically means that uh, they are actively monitoring network traffic uh, happening in their countries or entering or exiting uh, their countries, country premises, uh, recording and attempting to battle terrorism, supposedly, uh, by the means of uh, surveillance. And it's happening. It's really happening. Uh, it's not a um, paranoidal idea. It's uh, it takes place, and there is a particular organization in Germany that I have encountered through the job that I took about a year ago. Uh, I encountered actually active uh, uh, traffic interception when you are trying to connect to a host, and suddenly its certificate is different, and you're like, what the fuck? And uh, it's a clear indication of uh, what's called a, uh, well, man in the middle kind of uh, situation when uh, <coughs> A, a rogue organization or rogue uh, actor is trying to insert themselves along the way of the connection that you're legitimately creating to a remote host. It's hard to find uh, a slide that would actually visualize what virtual private networking is like, but this is the best. It's like this, this pipe, you see, going across the cloud of the internet, that's, that's the overlay. So you're, you're using the infrastructure of the internet, yet you're creating uh, an encrypted connection, which is there only for the two participants of, of that connection, which that virtually is only available to the two uh, participants of the connection, the, uh, let's say, the server, the big thing, and the laptop, the client. And no one else on, on the path of that connection can actually uh, decipher it for it being encrypted using quite a long encryption key. So that, not on a physical level, but on a logical level, it creates a new type of network. You, create, you can create different layouts, different topologies of uh, virtual private networks uh, on top of the existing infrastructure. Let's say, if I was to make an analogy, uh, if you're using like an old school telephone network, for instance, and you are calling someone without uh, assuming the line is uh, tapped, 
and you're calling someone and you want to communicate something without leaking it out, right? You would use some kind of like, if not an encryption, then like a, 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 a lingo. That lingo is the encryption. So it is meant only to, to be understood by the two participants of that uh, communication. So yet uh, VPN is much more advanced like that. You build on, build it on top of that, you can create multiple uh, multiple networks interconnected in various ways. Um, and effectively, you can actually create a very broad networks. There are other implementations of, if not same concept, but conceptually same idea. For instance, Tor network using an entirely different uh, approach uh, also allows to, at best, obfuscate the, the path that uh, the data takes over the internet. Another fail, basically, of mine to find a good slide, but uh, at least it, it uses the word overlay, which, which is what it is. It's one network built on top of another. I hope you got the idea. The idea is that you can, you can create, establish a connection over the internet, an encrypted connection. And that connection is not just uh, not necessarily peer-to-peer, -peer, but that uh, your destination where you create that connection can, in fact, become your, what's known, what's, what is known as a gateway. That, con that connection can provide you with the connectivity to the internet. So let's say if you're using a VPN connection from your home in Slovenia and your, your destination, your VPN gateway happens to be in Taiwan, once you establish that connection to the rest of the world, you will appear like you are actually in Taiwan, or at least you're using a ta Taiwanese uh, IP address or IP address assigned to that country. And that, is, that has huge, well, political, obviously, implications, but it is also interesting in terms of uh, exploring uh, the internet and exploring uh, internet infrastructure. I wanted to show you like a quick video of the device itself, which you can obviously see tomorrow at Axioma Gallery and use it. And as Janus kindly introduced, the idea you, uh, if you bring a USB stick and uh, one euro coin, you can use the machine to write out uh, a VPN profile onto your USB stick and then using your uh, OS X, Windows or Linux, uh, use that VPN profile to connect to one of those four destinations that the machine uh, uh, allows you to choose from. To dislocate yourself from Slovenia or wherever you are using your computer to that, to that place. And when Julia and I were creating this uh, machine, we were thinking about this idea in terms of a destination of desire. You know, we were thinking like, which place would I actually want to be accessing internet from? And of course, the choice fell to the countries which aren't part of the 5i program. And those countries are Taiwan, Iceland, uh, South Africa, and Mexico, uh, which are the part, as you see these four screens, they, they, they provide you, uh, they provide the interface uh, for choosing one of the four, uh, one of the four countries which uh, you can get a uh, VPN gateway uh, from. Essentially, that's the way it works. The blue lines are the countries uh, which aren't part of the FIFI network. As I mentioned, Mexico, South Africa, Taiwan, and Iceland. And the red lines are all other countries. Whenever you are in a territory which you suspect might be looking at the stuff you're sending online, you could use a VPN profile to reroute in a very secure way your traffic via one of the countries who give a damn about what you're sending, right? And those are the blue lines. It should be also mentioned that VPN, Vending Private Network as a project, is actually meant as a publicly funded uh, network, in, network infrastructure uh, project which redirects setting up and maintenance of uh, uh, virtual private network uh, infrastructure. And uh, each of you who will be coming tomorrow to Axioma Gallery and paying one euro for one of uh, VPN profiles will be also helping uh, people in countries with totalitarian regime or dissidents uh, working from abroad trying to better the lives of, of their soul, uh, countrymates and soulmates uh, 
working against regimes that are uh, particularly aggressive, uh, including my own country, in fact. It is an attempt to reroute some of the culture money into uh, the bettering of lives of uh, people in less fortunate situations and providing inf internet infrastructure being uh, a very needed resource these days, especially for those looking to spread a message. As a one of the last acts, uh, I'm just going to show you how it works. If you're going to get uh, a VPN profile tomorrow at, uh, at the Axioma Gallery, I'm going to do it on command line because, unfor well, fortunately for me, but maybe unfortunately for you, that's the only way I interact with machines uh, since more than 10 years. Uh, but on OS X, you could use uh, Tunnel Blick, uh, if that sounds familiar, or on Windows. It is actually called OpenVPN client, uh, which is a standard technology on Linux. You can do it the way I do it. You can use uh, one of those profiles. And right here I have uh, uh, four directories, which, is, which are for Iceland, Mexico, South Africa, and Taiwan. And when you pay a euro and get your stick out of the machine, what you are going to have on it is going to be uh, going to look something like that. It's going to be a open VP, OVPN, open VPN profile file that you can load into one of your open VPN or VPN managers on Android phone as well, actually. Uh, it will work on Android. I'm not sure about iOS. Uh, iOS. So in Google, if you say my location, and as I mentioned, Google is really good at figuring out your location. Uh, not surprisingly, right? <laughs> it's really, it's like it's better than any any other technology and like in the further presentations you will learn why that is the case. So currently I am clearly in Ljubljana and the idea of, as I reiterated myself several times, I hope not too many, uh, the idea of uh, using uh, a virtual networking is to actually relocate yourself physically from one place to another. Once the connection is established, and I'm using right now an uh, Icelandic uh, VPN server, from the perspective of your internet provider, you suddenly appear somewhere else. And that's, the, that's a very powerful idea. Not only for the kicks of it, not only to watch uh, Icelandic porn channels or whatever, or download uh, some uh, strangeness, uh, it is it, it dissolves borders, right? It uh, gives you many more rights, and it, it has many consequences too, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Let's try another one. Uh, let's say um, Taiwan. Oops. Our Taiwan's, Taiwanese server is kind of uh, slow, but given that about 200 profiles have been already distributed through the state machine uh, exhibition program, uh, there might be some traffic uh, happening. Also a big challenge actually choosing providers was that uh, we didn't have to provide uh, credit card information or anything like it because Effectively, as the owners of those gateways, we are kind of responsible for what is passing through those. And despite the fact that they are not in the uh, 5i, 7i, 14i's uh, uh, surveillance territory, they, have, they still have their own legislation. So they could like, you know, kind of kick our asses if something really bad was happening using our uh, connectivity we provide to the world. Uh, well, not to the world, to hopefully the friendly part of the world. And yeah, as I mentioned, it is uh, the idea is that we are doing it for the good of the good of the human kind. Let's try Mexico. Mexico is actually the most fun because uh, then you can do all the uh, Google searches uh, in Mexican context. Uh, I mean, I know reading logs is like boring, but uh, now we should be in Mexico. Well, yeah, right. Well, 
<clears throat> supposed to be Mexico. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of I I half the services uh, claim it's in Mexico, half the services claim it's in Chile. So we're supposed to be here, but anyways, we are at least not in Slovenia. <laughs> That's how it looks right now in uh, Axioma. It was actually really cool uh, to have those two guys come over and uh, bomb the world out with their tags. And it's supposed to be a a vending machine like the one you would see like somewhere you know in the dirty corner of the bar vending out uh, candy or condoms or whatever uh, because it's just as rudimentary to have your VPN profile in a the pocket these days as to have a condom or a candy uh, that's why that's the way it looks <laughs> uh, thanks